In this video, I'm going to bring you some news about our sun and the Earth's magnetic field to, to give you one more thing to worry about. First, let's read from the New York Post, uh, an article that dropped this morning. Uh, Geometri geomagnetic storm, when the northern lights will be visible in the U.S. And I take issue with that because uh, I believe the northern lights are visible in Alaska, and I believe that's part of the U.S., uh, but I think they're probably referring to the lower 48, where the northern lights are going to become visible. So let's read on. The NOAA believes the lights could reach a level 3 out of 5 on a geomagnetic storm severity scale. A solar storm impacting Earth is expected to briefly interrupt some communications and put on a dazzling display of the northern lights from coast to coast through Friday. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Space Weather Prediction Center has issued a geomagnetic storm warning and expects North America to see the greatest effects on Thursday, but warns any day through the end of the work week could be impacted. At a level 3, NOAA warns power grid fluctuations can occur, satellite irregularities are possible, and radio and GPS signals may temporarily fail or become weak. If you're an astronaut, you have to pay attention, and if you are an airline crew that does a whole lot of polar routes. In terms of actual like radiation effects for the general public, there are very few, said Dr. Laurel Rachmeller, the head of the Solar and Terrestrial Physics section of NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information. Pretty. Impacts are expected to remain north of the 50 geomagnetic latitude, and NOAA says an aura may be seen as far south as Pennsylvania, Iowa, and northern Oregon. The best times to view the aura will be between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. on Wednesday and Thursday nights. Major cities included in the potential viewing zone include Seattle, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Green Bay, Detroit, Syracuse, New York. Uh, space weather experts warn the event could be strong and seen by more residents than a typical event due to the sun's synchronized release of clouds of plasma and electrically charged particles. The first in a series of eruptions is thought to have left the sun on August 14th and traveled at a rate of around 1 million miles per hour towards Earth. Since there were two eruptions and the second largest episode overtook the first in space, the event is known as a cannibal coronal mass ejection. NOAA's GOES-18 satellite solar ultraviolet imager, which helps forecast space weather, also captured eruptions leaving the sun on August 15th and 16th. The orange-red image above measured plasma at 50,000 degrees Kelvin in the sun's atmosphere. The last light show created by a solar storm over, the, over North America happened around July 19th. The aurora, the aurora was so bright that photographers captured the colorful show even in the heart of Seattle, where light pollution typically mutes visibility. NASA says the current solar cycle, on the current solar cycle, activity is expected to ramp up until the next solar maximum is reached around 2025. A typical solar cycle lasts about 11 years as the sun's magnetic fields completely flip, impacting activity on the star's surface. And the reason that this is so important is that this is all an effect of a solar radiation and the Earth's magnetic uh, shield that we basically have from our uh, magnetic field, our geomagnetic field around the Earth. Uh, of course, you want to know more information about this. So let's turn to, uh, I want to point you to some other YouTubers. Um, it's called Suspicious Observers. And they've been uh, on YouTube for a very long time, I believe about 11 years. They constantly report on the weakening magnetic field with the Earth. And that the poles are moving around. And they're moving at a much uh, faster rate now. And they monitor sun activity, you know, basically coronal mass ejections. And they're reporting that they're watching for a very serious event, which is a switch in our magnetic poles. And that typically can take hundreds, if not thousands, of years to happen um, in that transition. And we actually get multiple poles during that time of that switch. And it causes all kinds of problems because those poles are fighting with each other. And they basically allow openings in our geomagnetic shield that blocks a lot of the, the sun's activity. And when you get ejections you know, from the sun, a plasma, you know, coronal mass ejections during those times where those holes are maybe pointed directly at that direction, you could see a lot of the sun's radiation getting through to the earth, which could cause serious issues. 
And if we experience that flip, it's going to cause a whole bunch of issues for um, life on Earth. Basically, everything magnetic, everything electronic, human beings, animals, plants, fish, everything. So let's let's watch a little further by watching a, a video from Tech Insider. Now, this video is about four years old, uh, but it's going to tell us a little bit more about our weakening... Uh, magnetic field and the apparently inevitable magnetic polar flip. Earth doesn't always just have a single magnetic north and south pole. Evidence suggests that for hundreds to thousands of years at a time, our planet has had four, six, and even eight poles at a time. This is what has happened when the magnetic poles flipped in the past. And when it happens again, it won't be good news for humans. Now you might think that eight poles must be better than two, but the reality is that multiple magnetic fields would fight each other. This could weaken Earth's protective magnetic field by up to 90% during a polar flip. So think about that, up to 90% of our protection would be gone, and then if you have a coronal mass ejection and, and you know plasma and stuff hits at that point, if it's aimed directly at us from the sun, you know, when that fires off, it comes right at us and it hits one of those weak spots that's 90% reduced, then that's where you get, you know, you know, people would be actually severely burned and everything else like that, um, that are in the direct path of that. You could literally have a scenario where it scorches the earth and, uh, you know, we lose that barrier and go to this state of being in a flip, you know, where, where basically our guard is down and it's always changing and it's moving around the earth and it would be difficult to protect any one area and there's all, all kinds of effects and stuff that take place let's let's listen further earth's magnetic field is what shields us from harmful space radiation which can damage cells cause cancer and fry electronic circuits and electrical grids with a weaker field in place some scientists think this could expose planes to higher levels of radiation, making flights less safe. This could also disrupt the internal compass in many animals, which use the magnetic field. And you think about the, the pole flip, like, you know, birds, you know, can fly south in the winter and, and, and all those kind of things where they're using basically where the poles are as kind of a, a their own internal GPS. And if that gets screwed up, you could literally have animals going in the wrong direction because if the poles flip, they're heading south and they're actually heading north. All those kind of things happen where, um, you know, think about if our GPS goes out, if you're out trying to find your way around and all of a sudden your phone doesn't have a signal or your phone <clears throat> experiences a, a, its own blackout <clears throat> and your GPS isn't working, then you could be completely lost and have no idea where you're at. And it's not like these birds are going to stop and ask directions, so um, we can see what kind of problems that could cause. For navigation. Even more extreme, it could make certain places on the planet too dangerous to live. But what exactly will take place on the surface is less clear than what will undoubtedly happen in space. Satellites and crewed space missions will need extra shielding that we'll have to provide ourselves. Without it, Intense cosmic and solar radiation will fry circuit boards and increase the risk of cancer in astronauts. Our modern way of life could cease to exist. We know this because we're already seeing a glimpse of this in an area called the South Atlantic Anomaly. It turns out, the direction of a portion of the magnetic field deep beneath this area has already flipped. Scientists say that's one reason why the field has been steadily weakening since 1840. As a result... So think about that. The, the field has been weakening since 1840, and it's just going down, going down, going down. And that's why we're experiencing, you know, the northern lights um, is an effect of solar radiation hitting, you know, that, that shield. And when you see that come really far south to hit the lower continental United States, that means there's an intense... Um, you know, amount of solar radiation hitting in that area to cause that. The Hubble Space Telescope and other satellites often shut down their sensitive electronics as they pass over the area. 
and astronauts on the International Space Station report seeing a higher number of bright flashes of light in their vision, thought to be caused by high-energy cosmic rays that the weaker field can't hold back. Since experts started measuring the anomaly a few decades ago, it has grown in size and now covers a fifth of Earth's surface, with no signs of shrinking anytime soon. This is so extreme that it could be a sign we're on the brink of a polar flip, or we may already be in the midst of one. But scientists remain skeptical, mainly because... The last thing the pulled from the Earth was 780,000 years ago, so it's, it's not, we don't have an all record. <laughs> Turns out, 780,000 years is over double the time that Earth usually takes between flips. Since the last mass extinction. So, I mean, if you think about that, you know, we're, we're due for it. And I think, uh, you know, some of these other, like, suspicious observers are using real data to tell us when, uh, you know, there's any sun activity. They're telling us about the weakening magnetic field, and that's probably something we need to start paying attention to. Uh you know, the main issue, again, is during a flip and transition, we lose that barrier. We have weak spots in that barrier. And then that's not even considering the, the complete flipping of that, which, you know, affects everything. It affects crops, you know, fish, insects, even humans' mental health. And, of course, power grids, electronics, satellites. You know, I'll link, I'll link the links below here to this video and as, as well as Suspicious Observers. You know, but it's something I thought I'd make you aware of that, uh, you know, we think about our our atmosphere as being like a shield, but the reality is it's it's more that magnetic field that's created. And all we see lately is that that field, the North Pole is just moving around at a faster and faster rate. The Earth is actually moving, spinning at a faster rate. That's increasing. We're having faster and faster uh, days. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things really weird going on with the weather in the in space. And um, it's something you might want to follow. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly concerned about it. I'm not one of those people to get into conspiracy theories very easily, but the science behind this is very solid. And while this video was four years old, there's a lot going on lately with, uh, you know, with uh, space weather. So, um, again, I'll link those videos down in the bottom here. And uh, I suggest uh, following suspicious observers and... Uh, Checking out the Tech Insider video if you wish to see more about it. Uh, please like, like and subscribe to videos as we try to make more and get more out. And thank you for stopping by.